Okay, uh, so this video is going to be on the uh, memoryless property uh, of the uh, memoryless property of the exponential distribution. Okay, uh, so I'm going to state in maths terms uh, what the uh, memoryless property is, and then I'm going to explain intuitively what it means. Uh, so the memoryless property is that the probability uh, that, let's say x is some random variable distributed exponentially, so I should write that x is some random variable distributed exponentially uh, with parameter lambda, uh, then the probability that x is, let's say, greater than or equal to s plus t, uh, given that x is greater than or equal to s, is equal to the probability that x is greater than or equal to t. So what does this mean? This means, effectively, if we look at the curve, uh, I just want to say that S and T are both positive real numbers. Uh, so if we look at the PDF for our, uh, for our um, exponential distribution, it looks something like this. Now, let's say S is here. Uh, wait a second, what am I doing? Yes, let's say S is here. And let's say S plus T is this amount here. So this is S plus T. And let's say this coming down here, uh, this one here is t. Right, okay, so basically what it says is the probability that x is greater than or equal to s plus t, so the probability of this happening given that the pro that x is greater than or equal to s. So it's saying, rest it's, we're doing conditional probability again, so we're saying restrict the domain, restrict the domain down to the uh, down to the uh, numbers that are greater than or equal to s. So uh, basically, we started off, uh, if we think about our, uh, we started off with some abstract probability space, which was being mapped or by our random variable onto the positive real numbers, so zero to plus infinity. And now what we're saying is cut this up, cut this up, uh, do away with the bit zero uh, to uh, s, and keep the bit s to plus infinity. So let's say this is the bit s to plus infinity here. And we're saying, uh, so if I highlight that up with this big black pen here. Okay, and basically uh, this will have a corres this is an event in this probability space. So it will have a corresponding event uh, back in the original abstract probability space. And we're saying, now let's do conditional probability. Let's say, uh, ignore this bit. Let this bit now be our whole sample space and just consider probability within there. So we are uh, basically, uh, we are just doing conditional probability. We're, the only difference is we're using the random variable to represent, well, the uh, image of the random variable, this new probability space, your map, uh, the random variable maps your abstract probability space onto, uh, we're using this one, uh, well, we're, we're describing an event in this one to condition on, basically, rather than describing an event in the original abstract probability space. But of course, these two are perfectly in correspondence and their probability space structures uh, are, uh, well, the probability space structure of this one is mirrored in the probability space structure of this one. So basically, what we're saying is if we condition if we do conditional probability on this event having happened and basically now we're saying look at the event that uh, x is greater than or equal uh, to s plus t so that's that this this bit here uh, here that which i've drew uh, colored in blue before so i'll stick to that uh, so uh, the uh, event s plus t all the way up to infinity let's say um Let's say um, that should be a curly bracket there. Let's say this is that event here. That is an event within our new probability space. So we've limited down the sample space uh, to just this event s to the plus infinity, and uh, the event um, the event s plus t to infinity, which used to be an event in the bigger. Uh, probability space is now an event in this smaller probability space and we're saying work out the conditional probability of that which is what this is here and it's going to be exactly the same as the probability that x is greater than or equal to t. So basically what that means is if I redraw this probability space here uh, there is some t along here so this is uh, let's say this is the event uh, t to plus infinity and uh, the way this works is the uh, ratio of the size of this event uh, s to plus infinity uh, compared to uh, the size or of uh, 
the uh, event, uh, well, what I mean, of course, here is the probability measure. The ratio of the probability measure of um, this event, uh, s plus t to infinity, uh, within the event s to plus infinity, i.e. the conditional probability of s plus t within this smaller one, is exactly the same as the probability of t, um, t to plus infinity, in the original probability space. They have effectively the same probability. Uh, so it's basically saying, if I now give you a concrete example of this, uh, let's say our abstract probability space uh, is uh, all outcomes of an experiment. So outcomes of an experiment. An experiment is that uh, you uh, you are waiting for a phone call. This is an absolute classic example for uh, a uh, a, well probability space to be uh, exponentially distributed. Let's say you're waiting for a phone call, and basically. Uh, this, prob this sample space here is going to contain all possible amounts of time you have to wait before getting the phone call. Uh, so uh, it's basically all positive. It, well, um, so you could wait, you know, one one minute, you could wait two minutes, three minutes, etc. And we will have this random variable mapping you onto the amount of time you waited. So that's in here, let's write it in words. So in this abstract probability space, we'll write one minute two minutes, etc. And now what we're doing is mapping those onto the algebraic structure over here. Uh, so again, it's one of these examples where you might think, oh gosh, how trivial. Why are we mapping a number onto the exact same number? But this number is denoting a thing. It's denoting an amount of time. Whereas this, these numbers over here have the algebraic structure, the field algebraic structure of the real numbers. Uh, this here, was, these were just symbols denoting Denoting a, uh, denoting a length of time. Over here, these are symbols with an algebra defined on them. So uh, again, yes, we've used the same symbols, uh, but uh, the structure that's intended over here is different from the structure intended over here. Uh, so basically, uh, you map each of these times onto their uh, corresponding real number. So one minute goes onto one, two minutes goes onto two. And uh, basically, uh, you often find that uh, it is distributed exponentially, that sort of a problem. So basically, what the memoryless property of the exponential distribution says is that uh, if, if, uh, if you get to the point, if you get uh, to after, let's say, s minutes, so you have been waiting for this phone call and the clock ticks on and you're at s minutes at the moment, uh, then the probability uh, that um, that the phone uh, that the phone rings uh, that the time at which the phone rings is s plus t, which means that the phone is going to ring in t minutes from where you are now, given that you are at uh, s minutes at the moment, that is equal to the probability that uh, the phone rang exactly at t minutes. So basically, what it's saying is that the problem is memoryless. It's saying that uh, if you start the experiment at time zero, the chance that you will have to wait t minutes for the phone to ring is exactly the same um, as if you have waited s minutes, the phone has still not rung, and you now want to know, given that you are at s minutes, what is the, proper, uh, the probability uh, that the phone will ring in t minutes, which is uh, s plus t minutes from the starting point of the experiment. Uh, so that's what it's saying. It's basically saying that the probability of the phone ringing, uh, ringing at any time does not depend on how long you have waited so far. Uh, so, if you've waited s minutes so far, and you want to know what is the probability that you will have to wait more than t minutes from where you are now, uh, it is the same as the probability that if you are sitting at zero minutes, uh, the phone will, you will have to wait over t minutes from where you were then uh, to uh, get the phone call. That is what the memoryless property is saying. So let's see why the exponential distribution obeys this. So uh, we know that the PDF of the exponential distribution is uh, going to be um, it's going to be zero if x is an element of um, negative oh no don't include negative infinity we are not working with the extended real numbers uh, negative infinity to zero uh, and it's going to be equal to lambda e to the negative lambda of x if x is an element of the positive real numbers okay uh, we also know that the CDF uh, big F of x 
is going to be equal to 0, again, if x is an element of the uh, non-positive real numbers. And it's going to be equal to 1 minus e to the negative lambda of x, uh, if x is an element of the positive real numbers. Okay, uh, so if we want to know uh, what is the probability that x is greater than or equal uh, to, uh, let's say, uh, some value t, since we've got here t, uh, then that is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to t. Remember, this is a continuous distribution, so we don't need to worry about saying strictly less than. It's exactly the same thing. Uh, so, uh, And the CDF is the probability that x is big X is less than or equal to little x. Uh, so if we stick in this, we get 1 minus 1 minus e to the negative lambda of x. And this is often known as the survival function, this probability that x is greater than or equal to t, uh, because the exponential distribution is often also used to model uh, you know, the size of a population. Uh, so uh, we can ask, what is the probability that uh, you will live longer than t years? Uh, well, that's going to be... Um, given by, uh, that's basically uh, asking what is the probability that it will survive greater than t or uh, greater than uh, t years, and it's given by e to the negative lambda x, so it falls like a negative exponential, so this is often called the survival distribution. Okay, so we now have what the probability that x is greater than or equal to t is, now what we need is to uh, apply the conditional probability formula, so we, uh, kn we know that the probability that x is greater than or equal to s plus t, given that x is greater than or equal to s. Now this is just going back to whenever we did this video. We're asking what is the probability of a given b? Well, um, this is event a and this is event b. So the event that you wait longer than s plus t, sec uh, t minutes or whatever, uh, and the event that you wait longer than s minutes. Uh, so just think of them as events, and we know that this is defined to be the probability of a intersection b divided by the probability uh, of b. Now, so if we write back in terms of these events here, it's the probability that x is less than or equal to s plus t uh, intersect uh, uh, using the comma symbol to mean intersect, uh, the, pro uh, the event that x is greater than or equal to s divided by the probability that x is greater than or equal to s. Okay. Oh, and uh, of course here, this should be the t here. I've just realised that that was I used the wrong symbol there, so that should be the t. I was saying the probability that x is greater than or equal to t, so I should have had the t for, uh, here just to be consistent with my notation. Uh, so, um, as I showed you in this picture up here, uh, the uh, the event that x is greater than or equal to s plus t is completely contained within the event that x is greater than or equal to s. So the intersection of this event with this event is actually just the whole event itself, the probability that x is greater than or equal to s plus t, uh, divided by the probability that x is greater than or equal to s. And that is just because the intersection of this event with this, in uh, this event is just this event here, because that event is completely contained within that event. Okay? Uh, so... Uh, now what we do, uh, we need this paper back again, uh, we calculated the probability that x is greater than or equal to t. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to s plus t, we just stick in s plus t rather than t, basically. Uh, so we get that this is e to the negative lambda of s plus t divided by the probability that x is greater than or equal to s is e to the negative lambda of s. Now, basically, we just apply, uh, if you divide two exponentials, it's the same as subtracting the powers. So this is e to the negative lambda of s plus t minus uh, minus lambda of s. Uh, so we get plus lambda of s. This cancels with the minus lambda of s here, so we just get e to the negative lambda of t, which is indeed equal to the probability that x is greater than or equal to t. So just to recap, the memoryless property of the exponential distribution is that um, if you ask what is the probability that the phone call will take longer uh, than s plus t minutes from your starting point, given that you actually are at s minutes now, s minutes from your starting point. So given the fact that you have actually waited already s minutes since the starting point, what is the probability that the phone call will take longer than s plus t minutes from your original starting point? Uh, well, that is the same as the probability that, uh, that uh, the phone call is going to take longer than t minutes from your original starting point. Uh, so let me draw a picture just to clarify this one last time. 
So here is zero minutes. You go up to S minutes. You have waited this long, and you are now asking, uh, how, uh, what is the chance that I will have to wait, uh, let's say this is T minutes from now, but it's S plus T minutes from the starting point over here. And basically, the probability uh, that you will have to wait, uh, that uh, the amount of time from the starting point, remember that's what X is, it's the random, it's the amount of time you had to wait for the phone call from zero time, uh, amount of time of time from zero, not from your given point, but we're going to say uh, that if we want the probability from our given point, we want to know what is the probability uh, given that we are already at S, uh, that is equal to the probability that X is greater than or equal to uh, S plus T, given that we are already at S, uh, then that is actually equal. It's exactly the same question as asking if we were at zero, uh, the probability that x is greater than or equal to t, given that x is greater than or equal to zero. So given that we're at zero, uh, what is the probability that we're going to have to wait longer than t? And that's why it's called the memoryless property, because uh, the probability that the phone call is going to come in now uh, does not change the longer you wait, basically.